what are the best settings for this monitor? And by best settings, I mean the settings which I adopted as my test settings in my review. They're appropriate for my unit, according to my own preferences and the colour emitter targets that I typically go for in my reviews. Individual units and preferences do vary, so do feel free to make your own adjustments. The first thing you'll come across in the menu which I would recommend paying attention to is in gaming and that's overdrive. I would recommend just leaving this at smart OD or setting this to smart OD. Although it does use quite an aggressive overdrive impulse so if you're quite sensitive to overshoot and you prefer to tone that down then you could consider the picture quality setting instead. You want to have VRR enabled if you want to use VRR and that would include NVIDIA G-Sync compatible or AMD FreeSync. The picture setting has the presets of the monitor. It doesn't really matter too much what you set this to as you can adjust most things according to your own preferences. But the best baseline really is from custom or standard. Custom gives you a bit of an advantage in that it unlocks your six axis color control. I didn't actually make adjustments here, but I know some people do like to fine tune this kind of thing. For some people, the sRGB setting is actually gonna be optimal and that's because it will tone things down and will get rid of oversaturation for most content as it clamps the gamut close to sRGB. It does look off a lot of settings though. You can adjust the brightness. As usual, I like to use the full native gamut of the monitor for most of the review and then explore sRGB separately. So I'm gonna to stick to custom. I set brightness to 30. This got close to 160 nits on my unit, which is appropriate for my own preferences, lighting environment, and is what I target in my reviews for consistency. Individual preferences and lighting environments will vary, so please adjust this according to those. Anything I'm not mentioning, by the way, including gamma and contrast, I left at the default values in the custom setting. I then set color temperature to user define, red to 100, green to 94, and blue to 86. On my unit, this got close to the 6,500K target I typically go for with a good neutral green channel. Individual units do vary, so be aware of that. And that's actually all I changed under SDR. So overdrive set to smart OD, but we consider picture quality as an alternative if you are quite sensitive to overshoot. VRR enable, using the custom preset, brightness set to 30, color temperature at user define, red 100, green 94, blue 86. I've now enabled HDR in Windows. I'm gonna talk about my HDR settings. I'm now in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, running the game under HDR. This monitor is very limited from a hardware perspective when it comes to HDR. And to be completely honest, really what you're gonna be doing is just setting this all up according to your own preferences. If you want the most accurate look, just be aware that because of the hardware limitations, it's never gonna look overly accurate under HDR. But the overall balance and representation is actually best, boringly enough, using the default settings. So you'll see in picture, different presets are available now. You've got HDR, HDR game, and HDR movie. So I would just stick to HDR. If you do wish to change things, then you could use one of the other presets, and you could use either one. They have things set to different values by default, but if you change all of that to the same as the other setting, then it will look the same as that other setting. So you can adjust the brightness if you want to. You can adjust the contrast according to your preferences as well. I'd recommend just leaving that at the default or roughly there. The light enhance setting, that really brightens up and boosts the saturation of quite a lot of shades. So it just gives a more punchy look really if you increase this. It's quite clearly oversaturated now at three, although it's actually quite clearly oversaturated even before then. But some people do like this look, this extra punch. And given that this monitor is never gonna look incredible under HDR, don't feel bad if you do like this look. I totally get it. If you just wanted to boost up saturation, it will cause oversaturation. Again, some people like that, but if you want that without the rest of what Light Enhance does, you can just change Color Enhance. So set to three, you get that kind of oversaturation I was talking about. It's difficult to see in the video, but there's a lot of extra punch to the fiery elements. They verge far too much towards a deep red or a very bright orange. Again, if you like this look, you've got that flexibility here. There's Dark Enhance, and that's set to on by default for the HDR game setting. I'd actually set that off because the monitor sort of looks a bit flooded anyway because the backlight is on at such a strong value. I mean, we're able to see IPS glow and clouding towards the corners of the screen for that reason, but it looks extra foggy with Dark Enhance on. If you like an uplifted look to enhance some of the details in dark areas, that's what you get from Dark Enhance. But again, my preference is just the HDR setting, which looks very similar to HDR game with all of those enhancements left disabled. I'm back on SDR now. I'm just gonna to stick to the scene I was showing you because I'm just gonna talk about visibility enhancement under SDR. So the main way you'd achieve that is with the black equalizer 2.0 setting. 
You'll notice that if you increase that a lot, things look really flooded overall. So a lot of your medium shades are over brightened ex to extreme values, so they look far too light and things look really rather anemic. But it does give a nice boost to dark details. So you might like to boost that up just a little bit. If you want a competitive edge and you want to be able to see a bit better in darker areas of games. Alternatively, you might just want to use the sRGB setting because that targets sRGB gamma rather than linear 2.2 gamma, and that will give you an uplift to dark shades. So just switched between it a few times to give you an idea of the kind of uplift you can expect. Remember that they really are dark to medium dark shades I'm showing you in this scene here for the dragon sculpture there in particular. And remember that this also clamps the gamut close to sRGB, so it will lower your saturation levels. Alternatively, you could stick to your favourite presets such as custom and lower the gamma level. I also like to briefly talk about on-screen crosshairs, I'll just show that they do exist, so I'm just going to do that. And they're in Game Assist crosshair, so a few different styles there. When you've selected one, you can also select the offset so you can move it. It's always roughly in the middle of the screen though, so I've offset it as far as I could to the right there. So you can't have it right at the right of the screen or anything like that, but you can just nudge it a bit off centre. And you can do that vertically and horizontally. And if you want to reset it right to the middle, offset, reset. You can also use Gigabyte Control Center software if you want to customise the crosshair. So you can adjust the colour and the design, but it's going to be roughly in the centre of the screen. 